Hello GED students, looking at a problem today that I decided to prioritize for a couple of reasons. One, by looking at it closely, we can really help cement some of the concepts uh, that we need to understand in order to be GED ready when it comes to exponents. So some of the exponent concepts we really need to get are going to be reinforced with this problem, but also because it is a very good college prep problem. It involves a rule known as the power rule that your college professors are going to expect you to know and to understand. Now, that being said, you do not need to know this vocabulary for the GED. You do not need to know or have memorized the power rule in order to understand this problem. In fact, the way I'm going to do it is without the rule, um, I'm going to do it the kind of the long way to show the student who sent it to me, that's Lola, to show her that why the power rule works the way it does and clarify the problem that she's having. So let's go ahead and dig right in. Directions to this problem simply say simplify. And then we see this expression and notice the parentheses. Notice how the parentheses are around the entire 3R squared. That's super important. What that's saying right there is that we're taking the entire expression, 3R squared, and raising it to the fourth power. As it turns out, exponents are super duper weak. They really only belong to the number they're directly attached to unless you use parentheses to strengthen their power. And so what I'm saying here by putting this whole thing in parentheses and putting the four outside of that is that this fourth power applies to everything in this parentheses. And that's crucial to understanding this problem. Now, Lola has the power rule memorized, which is a great rule. Again, and like I said, they are going to expect that you just understand this shortcut uh, at college. So let's go ahead and clarify what this rule is that I'm talking about. So let's get rid of this and talk about the power rule. Okay, the power rule says that to raise an exponential expression, what's an exponential expression? It's just something with an exponent on it, guys. <laughs> so we have an exponential expression here. There's an exponent involved. So to raise an exponential expression to a power, so talking about something that already has an exponent, uh, such as we see here, we see a expression that already has this little square on it. Okay, that's what I mean when I say an exponential expression. And then when I say that we're going to raise that to another power, I'm talking about how we see that other exponent that this whole expression here is being raised to. Okay, and then the power rule says that if we want to do that, we simply just multiply the exponents. And that's great. And it's a lovely rule if you understand it. It's a great shortcut, meaning that you don't have to like write out this problem another way and do the math the long way to figure it out if you understand it. But here's the problem. Um, Lola saw that and she said, hey, look, this is an exponential expression. I'll simply multiply the exponents. And so the answer must be 3r to the eighth. And she was mistaken and her answer didn't match mine and she just couldn't understand why and that's because there is more than an exponential expression in these parentheses let me say that again there's more than an exponential expression in these parentheses there are two bases in this parentheses bases are numbers with their feet on the floor. We see this big three with his feet on the floor here. This is a base of three. And we see this R. I know you might say, Kate, it's an R squared. And I agree with you. It's R with an, a base R with an exponent of two. But what that means when you see uh, a base R with an exponent of two, so a base R with an exponent of two, is this two tells us how many R's there are multiplying. So what that's saying is that there's actually two R's multiplying. So really, I mean, one way to think about this, Lola, is that we have a three 
and an R and an R, all multiplying already. That's what's already going on inside the parentheses. And then this is saying that I want to take that whole thing, the three, the R and the other R, okay, the three and the two R's multiplying. And repeat that four times. Remember what exponents mean. It means repeated multiplication. So literally the way I did it when I showed it in the video that confused you was I wrote this the same expression, three times R times R, that's what three R squared means, out four times because that's what it means to uh, raise something to the fourth power. It means the same as multiplying something by itself four times. Now, once it's written out like this, I get rid of the powers. That's why I say if you're working on the GED, you don't actually need the power rule uh, because you could write it out this long way and figure it out every time. And we can see that there's four threes multiplying. It's not only four R squareds, it's also four threes. And that's why I don't end up with a three in my answer because I need to do the multiplication there. Three times three is nine. This three times three would be nine and of course nine times nine is 81 and guys you'll get 81 no matter how you do it if you want to do three times three is nine times another three is 27 times another three is 81 you'll you're going to get 81 either way and then we can see clearly by writing it out in expanded form that r times 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 r is eight r's multiplying otherwise known as r to the eighth power uh, and that's how I got my answer by looking at that expanded form. But you might be saying to yourself, Kate, dear goodness, this is a long, dumb way. I can't do this every time. What if the thing was really ugly? What if I had a 17th power? I'm not going to write it out in expanded form. Please won't you use the power rule and show me how it works. Okie dokie. Let's give this a try with that lovely power rule. And let's just clarify that it is absolutely crucial. I told you how to raise the exponential expression to a power, but my warning to you about the power rule is that it extends to every base. Okay, and I'm going to call those the factors. Remember, factors are things multiplying. And, oh, I didn't even say what extends. The exponent extends to every factor uh, in the uh, parentheses. Okay, so what this 3r squared says is that I have a 3 multiplying with an r squared. I have two factors here. I have a factor of 3 and I have a factor of r squared. They both have to get a piece of the action here. Since the 4 is outside the parentheses, it's saying that I'm giving that fourth power to every factor inside the parentheses. So I have to raise 3 to the fourth power and I have to raise r squared to the fourth power. Now, I Guys, I wouldn't write this out either. I'm so lazy, I'd go straight to showing my next step. I would raise three to the fourth power, whether I did it in my calculator, or I did it by hand, or I don't know, I called and asked my mommy, what is three to the fourth power? However, I got the answer, I would write that down. And three to the fourth power is indeed 81, because again, three to the fourth power simply means three times three times three times three. And then I would use that power rule on the factor that's actually an exponential expression. The three was not exponential. The r squared, however, is exponential. And so let me apply that power rule to raise the exponential expression, the r squared, to a power. I'm simply going to multiply the exponents. So it's not that the power rule was broken. It's that it only applies to the exponential portion. Okay, so like, let's compare that now, um, Lola, to a couple of different other instances. You could have had an expression that looked like this. 3 r squared to the fourth. Take a look at the way the parentheses are now. When I, I see the way the parentheses are now, it's very clear that it's only the r squared in the parentheses. So it's only the r squared that's actually being raised to the fourth power. That's when I would get the answer that you predicted. The three would be unaffected by the fourth power 
And the r squared, though, is an exponential expression being raised by a pow to another power. So I can simply, like you said, multiply the exponents. 2 times 4 is 8. And that's when I would end up with 3 r to the eighth power. But I could also have something where uh, every number, or I should say every factor, has an exponent. Like here, for example, um, I don't know. Let's try x to the fifth, y to the second, and raise that all to the fourth power. Now again, we can see that I have two factors here. I have a factor of x, of course it's occurring five times, but still x to the fifth, and I have a factor of y. Again, it's occurring two times, y squared, uh, but it's still a factor of y. And I'm raising that whole thing to the fourth power, and now since they're both both these factors are exponential expressions, I could use the power rule. x to the fifth raised to the fourth power is of course x to the 20th power. And y to the second raised to the fourth power is y to the two times four, or y to the eighth power. So if the different factors in your expression are all exponential, exponential factors, they're all exponential expressions, I should say, they're raised to a power, then yeah, go ahead and uh, use the power rule. But if it's a plain old number, three, that's just a plain old regular number, three, we can follow our plain old regular rules for raising it to the fourth power using repeated multiplication to simplify. All right, Lola, I know that was a lot, but my favorite game is talking too much. <laughs> I hope that made it crystal clear for you. And please let me know if you have any questions. And that goes for everybody out there. If you have any questions about this or GED math or, hey, just math in general. Someone was asking me about college math today. Um, I'll do my best to get you a clear but probably long-winded explanation. All right. Happy learning.